Hello everyone, welcome to Talk Talks. I am your host, Andrew Kistner, for the Oxford Center Talks. And today I have a really cool guest. Her name is Carol Kramer. She is from Kramer Acupuncture in town. Uh, acupuncture is something that I've always been interested. I've not done it yet. I plan to at some point uh, for a whole number of things that I think it might help for, but I'd like to learn about it. So I sat down with Carol, was it earlier this week? Yes. Earlier this week mm -hmm. and got to talking and really kind of got interested in what she does and how she does it and thought we should do a podcast and get together with her, talk a little bit, learn a little bit about acupuncture, who she is and how she kind of operates. Uh, she is local here to Brighton, uh, and we'll kind of get some of those details, which we'll also put in the description. So, Carol, thank you so much for being oh, here. Oh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. It's, uh, it's yeah. acupuncture's interesting. Um, tell me a little bit how you got into it. How, tell me a little bit why. Yeah, um, so I had my first acupuncture treatment in my early 30s. Okay. I was um, part of a startup company um, and I was stressed out mm -hmm. working, you know, 60, 70 hours a week, yeah. had neck pain from being over the computer all day long. And I've always been interested in holistic health. Right. Um, so I had my first acupuncture treatment and I was absolutely amazed. I literally would walk into that treatment and just be so stressed <laughs> after an hour of South Florida traffic. Right. And I would walk out of there and be like, oh my gosh, if somebody cuts me off, it's like, oh, fine, <laughs> no worries. <laughs> um, it really helped. It the world really... needs more of that, <laughs> yes. that's for sure. <laughs> no, but I was, I was just fascinated and amazed that these little tiny pins right. could make such a huge difference right. in how... how I felt in such a short amount of time. How long has it been around? Um, well, acupuncture, I mean, the first recorded history, it's 3,000 years. Well, that's a long time. <laughs> it's a long time. And it's still a around. Long time. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Uh, what made you decide to go into it? Um, well, I, I was in a corporate job, and like I said, I've always been interested in holistic modalities. Right. So I had explored a lot of different, right. you know, I had done meditation. Um, I even did a shamanic energy medicine course. Huh. Um, you know, I, I was interested in all of these different modalities. And I landed on Chinese medicine because um, it's a very logical, systematic, all-encompassing form of medicine. Right. Um, and Which also has been around for like 5,000 years. Right. And that's what I also love about it is that it's been around for that long and it's also um, the, the, the Chinese medicine doctors throughout the centuries have documented what they're doing. That's crazy. So we have such a rich history and such a rich documentation so that we can um, you know, practice the medicine uh, and get reproducible results. Right, right, yeah. right. So what goes into becoming an acupuncturist? Um, so it's um, it's a four-year master's degree. Really? Yes, for acupuncture and Chinese herbal medicine. Are those uh, under the same degree? They are normally under the same okay. degree. There are some uh, universities that only do you know just acupuncture. Most do acupuncture and Chinese herbal medicine. So it's it's a commitment. It's a four-year yeah. master's degree. Most master's degrees are two years. Yeah. Um, and uh, we have a one-year clinical internship under the supervision of medical doctors. So, um, you know, we have that experience. Um, we have to pass four national board exams. Wow. <clears throat> become licensed nationally and then right. become licensed in the state. And then also, of course, continuing education requirements. So talk to me, you had to do a one-year internship under yes. a medical doctor. Yes. Do you set that up or does the school have medical the doctors that they work with? Yeah, the school sets it up. Okay. The school Good. sets up the internships. So we're treating real patients. That's pretty you know, we're cool. We're treating real people off the street. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So yeah. talk to me a little bit about what acupuncture is. I think everyone probably, at least from my perspective, has kind of the same view. You lay down and they stick needles in you. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot more going on, yes. I'm assuming. Yes. So get yes. down to the nitty gritty of what, <laughs> what it really is. You know, really, um, at, from a high level, what's happening is we're using the pins to communicate with the brain um, because the brain is the command center for yep. the body. Yep. So we're using the pins to communicate with the brain. We're telling the brain um, to increase blood flow. Oh, okay. So I can, I can tell the brain to increase blood flow anywhere I want in your body. 
Hmm. When we increase that blood flow, we reduce inflammation, we bring nutrients, we bring oxygen to the cells, right. we remove obstacles that may be hindering the body from, from working well. So we're, we're putting the pins in, working with the brain, increasing blood flow, reducing inflammation, and then reducing pain as a result. Interesting, that makes sense. Uh, mm -hmm. So how many, on average, pins do you put in somebody? You know, it depends on the person. It depends on, um, and you know, on what we're treating. I mean, it can be anywhere from 10 to 40 pins. 10 to 40 pins. <laughs> yes. All right. Okay. Does it hurt? Um, we're working with the nervous system, so we want you to feel that something. Sense. That makes sense. Um, most pins you won't feel. Um, some pins, when they go in, it might feel like a little mosquito bite. Okay. Um, and then I'll also manipulate the pins because what I want you to feel is a deep, dull, aching sensation around some of the points, and that means it's working. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Now, when somebody has, because uh, I know we'll go over some, kind of some of the conditions that you treat, mm -hmm. but, you know, let's say my elbow hurts, and mm -hmm. I think acupuncture might help. Mm -hmm. You think it might help. I don't know if you do or not, mm -hmm. but you think it, yes. for this example, you do. Yes. <laughs> um, do you put pins necessarily in my elbow, or would you put pins somewhere else that would affect my elbow? I would put, I start out, I would put pins somewhere else. Interesting. I generally don't put pins directly in the area that hurts. Okay. Because that can cause increased inflammation hmm. at that area. And and like I said, we're working with the brain. Right. So for example, if you have um, you know elbow pain, I would put pins in your opposite elbow and your opposite knee. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's crazy when mm -hmm. especially when you're looking at the holistic perspective of medicine, yeah. how everything obviously is connected mm -hmm. and in like there's some things where you need to massage your feet because you have a headache mm -hmm. or, or whatever the case, mm -hmm. I'm throwing out an example, but um, it's crazy how everything is just connected. It is. And you'd think logically, well, you know, you just, if this hurts, you stick a pin in it yeah. or, you know, yeah. you do this. Uh, that's, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about some of the conditions that mm -hmm. are most commonly treated. Uh, and then my next question will be, what are some of the conditions that you can treat that mm -hmm. aren't as commonly mm -hmm. treated with acupuncture. Yeah, um, so most common neck pain and back pain. Yeah, lower um, back pain is my Low back issue. pain, yeah, <laughs> low back pain, neck pain. Um, I would say 80 to 90% of my patients who come to me have, have pain. Even if they're not coming in for that, they yeah. still have neck and back pain. Um, next would probably be knee pain. I treat a lot of knee pain. Hmm. Um, so uh, headaches. Um, That's good to know. Yeah, a lot of people have like, Chronic headaches. Oh yeah, yeah, huh. um, yeah. I was uh, treating a, a woman in the past year or so, and um, she had came to me with low back pain, and you know we were able to resolve that. And she had mentioned her headaches as sort of a, you know, just in passing. Right. And I had noted that she had headaches, and um, but we were focusing on her back. And about two months into treatment, she said, Carol she said, you know, I was getting, I would get injections for my migraines. And she said, I don't think I'm going to get my next injection <laughs> because I haven't had a headache since right. we started treatment. And she did not do her injection, and she's still headache-free. That's crazy. So it was a, a wonderful side effect right. of acupuncture. Absolutely. And, and that's the beauty of the medicine is that it's impossible for me to only treat one thing. It makes sense. isolate yeah. one thing in the body because everything is connected. Right, right. What's, uh, so what are, so neck pain, back pain, mm -hmm. headaches, what's in your mind, mm -hmm. what's uh, a condition that kind of goes against mm -hmm. what people would really think acupuncture would help with? What's, what's the most yeah. out of the, you know, out of the box thing that you've treated or could treat? Mm -hmm. um, women's health. Okay. Women's health issues. Um, one of the things are, are, are painful periods yeah. for women. Um, and endometriosis. Hmm. Um, with acupuncture and Chinese medicine, we're really able to make a difference for women, a lasting difference uh, to those symptoms. Yeah, I, I had a patient, um, this was a, a couple of years ago, and treated her with acupuncture and Chinese medicine, and within a month, her the painful periods um, right. had subsided. She also had daily headaches. Those had subsided, 
and um, I just spoke with her last summer and she's still doing great. That's awesome. So that that's the unique thing about our medicine too is that it's not just a temporary right. fix. Because we're working with the brain, we're creating new neural pathways in the brain. Right. It's kind of like um, you know, in a snowstorm you've got a road and you know you have all of the snow and ice and everything on the road, but once you clear off that pathway, the pathway's clear. Right. So and we, you know, th the neural yeah. pathways are like cars driving on it. You know, if yeah. you've got two feet of snow, no one's driving on it. You exactly. clear it once, now the cars can go through. Exactly. And it, it maintains, yeah. you know, that's a good example. I like that. Yeah. I'm going to take yeah. that. Um, <laughs> so uh, as far as, and I like to talk also about uh, Chinese medicine, but mm -hmm. as far as acupuncture goes, kind of what are some of the ages? How young mm -hmm. can you go? How old mm -hmm. can you go? Or it does, mm -hmm. does it matter? Um, so with acupuncture, I started treating my nieces and nephews when they were four years old. <laughs> Wow. So, of, of course, that was a special situation. For sure. Um, I would say the youngest patient that I've treated um, was eight years old. Okay. Um, but he came with his mom, so he understood what the process was. Yeah. And he was eager. You know, right. he asked to be treated. Right. Um, it generally, usually, you know, 12, 13. Okay. You know, as soon as the, as soon as the um, young person can understand that they need to stay still, that right. they shouldn't move. Um, that they're not afraid. Right. Um, so I'm 38. Teenagers. I might not be old enough. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if those are the qualifications. Uh, who knows? Um, and you know, I've treated. I think my. Um, I've treated people in their 90s. Yeah. That's so that's, all ages. That's awesome. Yeah, and and one of the beautiful things about it is that it's appropriate for almost. It, it's it's a great option for most people in most right. conditions, right. Um, meaning. You know, even women who are pregnant, you know, they don't have a lot of options as far as pain relief. No. Um, you know, they, they, they just don't right. have a lot of options. Mm -hmm. So acupuncture is fantastic for that because we can relieve their back pain, their aches, you know, their feet swell. They right. have uh, morning sickness. Um, so we can do all of these things. Um, people who are on a lot of medications, yeah. you know, they, that might preclude them from taking some of the uh, Chinese herbal medicines. So we can treat them with acupuncture. Interesting. Yeah, that would have been good to know when Emily was pregnant. Uh, Emily, my wife, yeah. yeah, you met her the other day. Mm -hmm. uh, she had nine months of morning sickness. Like oh my nothing gosh. helped. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, it was rough. And then we have yeah. a person in my office that's pregnant. Yeah. And, you know, obviously Grace is eight years old. So mm -hmm. it's been a long time since I've been around a pregnant person for eight hours a day yeah. plus. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, it, you start to relive some of those things of yeah. I have a cold. Okay. Right. <laughs> Sorry. You right. Gotta, your body's got to figure it out because right. you can't just go and take, you know, NyQuil, DayQuil and all exactly. the other, all the other things, exactly. even for some common issues. So acupuncture exactly. may be able to help some of these things. Ac absolutely. That is pretty absolutely. cool. Absolutely. All right. So let's talk a little bit about Chinese medicine, mm -hmm. um, which I think is absolutely amazing mm -hmm. uh, stuff. We took Grace to a Chinese medicine doctor. Mm -hmm. um, it was a little over an hour, hour and a half away. Um, we were trying to treat something, the seizures, which we've been trying to treat for a long time. Mm -hmm. Neurologists can't get a hold of it, not even mm -hmm. close. They don't even see them. Mm -hmm. um, so we're obviously out of the box thinkers. And yeah. so somebody said, hey, I don't know, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, mm -hmm. you know, for, for that. It was mm -hmm. working for their child and what they were looking for. But um, it didn't end up, we saw some improvements in Grace's mm -hmm. life, but the seizures were still there. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought it was really neat. It's a completely mm -hmm. different perspective and experience. Uh, mm -hmm. than what going to do a Western medicine doctor. Mm -hmm. um, so talk to me kind of a little bit about the basis of mm -hmm. Chinese medicine. Mm -hmm. What's, mm -hmm. what's the, the 30,000 foot view of it? Um, so the 30,000 foot view, um, I'll, I'll actually start sort of with a an Go for imagery. It. <laughs> Go for it. So, so we look at the, if you can imagine that your body um, is a garden Mm -hmm. And let's say that it hasn't been tended appropriately for a while. Sounds, sounds and, right. you know, Most of us. <laughs> and there's a flower in the middle of it that just isn't growing. Got it. So, you know, the, from our approach, we wouldn't fix the flower. We fix the environment around the flower. Yeah. So, for example, one of the first things that you'll need to do is clear out the rocks. Right. Clear out clumping. Clear out the, um, uh, you know, any weeds. Right. So you want to clear everything to get a clear ground. Then you want to look at the filtration system, the water system. Is water getting to the right plants at the right time? Is there water pooling somewhere? Is there a dry spot? Right. So you want to fix the water filtration system. Then you, you want to fix, you know, the, the, the make sure that the, it's 
getting the appropriate heat and cool. Some plants need that dormant period of cooling, right? Mm -hmm. um, other plants need full sun. You want to make sure that heating and the cooling systems are working for those plants. Um, and at that point, once everything is working, then you supplement, then you nourish, then right. you put the Improve fertilizer and all on. the other things that they need. Exactly. You're a master at examples. I'm going to give you that. <laughs> You know, and, and, and so we wouldn't, we, you wouldn't start by, you know, if we went back to the beginning when we first saw the garden, right. you wouldn't start putting fertilizer on it right. because it wouldn't go where it needed to go. Right. And once you clear everything out, you know, once you make everything clear the ground, make sure everything's working, you may not need to put fertilizer on it because right. the system's working. So that's in how I, how we view Chinese medicine. Okay. So for whatever condition, we're going to look at what's, what's blocking that flow, that movement in the body. We're always looking for appropriate movement. Okay. That's what the science is. It's the movement. Um, so we're going to clear things out. Um, then we're going to look at the, uh, the filtration, the water system, you know, we're going to, you right. know, you may have a, f you may have phlegm here right. and you may have constipation, which could be dryness. Right. So you've got enough liquid in the body. You've got enough fluid in the body. It's just not getting to the right place. Then we work hmm. with that. Then we'll, we'll talk about the heating and cooling systems. And once all of those are, are done with Chinese herbal medicine, those will be different formulas for each phase in the process. So it's no one size fits all. Right. It's going to be a different phase, and then uh, then we move to, then we might start supplementing if there's okay. still deficiencies, but that's the last thing we do. Yeah, that's so it's so mm -hmm. backwards to Western medicine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and that's we've talked about it on the podcast for, with mm -hmm. a dozen people, uh, uh, you know, about Western medicine and mm -hmm. the differences between the Oxford Center and Western medicine. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we utilize some Western medicine. Yeah. I always told people if you have strep throat and you go to one of our doctors, they're going to write you amoxicillin. Absolutely, it's going to work. You know, yeah. And, yeah. and it's going to take care of the situation. But in short, when we're dealing with conditions, mm -hmm. um, it, not just sickness, conditions, yeah. we want to get to that root cause, yeah. and that's what we want to fix. And we want to fix it in a way that we give your body the ability mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to heal itself. Yes. You know, through whatever means that might be for, for that specific condition. So that's mm -hmm. kind of the same philosophy. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Very cool. Yeah, we don't, we don't look at things in isolation. Right. So if there's a problem with the liver, it may not be the liver that's causing the problem. It could be the, you know, what's coming before it gets right. to the liver, what's coming after the liver. Right. So we want to look at the entire system, yeah. how everything is moving that's in interesting. the body. I was talking to a gentleman the other day. Um, and this is, it kind of hit, hope, hit close to home uh, for me as well, is we had Grace on, um, in short, his daughter was on a medication that would affect the liver. Mm. Um, and they knew it. Yeah. And, you know, they did nothing. You know, mm -hmm. they would test and test, you know, every so often. And yeah. they, they stopped testing and the liver enzymes kept going higher, whatever the case may mm -hmm. be. And it destroyed her liver. She needed a liver transplant. Oh, She's got to be in her 40s. Oh, gosh. Um, you know, when yeah. Grace was on a medication that would affect her liver, you know, we, yeah. we went to... Uh, a naturopathic doctor we were seeing at the time, she said, oh, if you're going on that, you need this. Yeah. And it was something all natural. It was a, a root or ashwagandha. I don't know, yeah. remember specifically this a couple years ago. Um, but people don't understand that mm -hmm. there's things, resources outside of Western medicine, mm -hmm. that Western medicine, maybe you need that med, yeah. but we need to support the rest of the body and what yeah. that med's doing yeah. so that we don't get trapped in a... Uh, endless list of medications right you know you take one pill and then you take two pills to counteract right. all the things going on with that pill right. and then these pills are going to cause some problems so we're going to take a couple <laughs> more pills before you know it you're on 18 pills yeah. you know three times a day yeah and it's a huge mess yeah so yeah, yeah we're and, same yeah we're yeah a good company here yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well you know and that's one of the beauties of chinese medicine too right. it's also been around for three thousand years and they've documented this right. And um, I always like to say it's it, it's been human experimentation for three thousand years. Yeah. They are not experimenting in a laboratory. It right. was does this work for you? Why or why not? Right. Um, and that's one of the beauties. You know, we, when we're prescribing Chinese medi uh, herbal medicine, we rarely give one single herb at a time. Right. It's always a, a formula that's a balanced formula, so that if we want an action of one herb that we know is going to cause a side effect somewhere right. else, we know which herbs to put with it to reduce that side effect while still maintaining the action yes. of that original herb. Right. So the the, the formulas are just beautifully um, 
beautifully composed to match the 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 pattern presentation that's going on at yeah. that time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and your formulas will change. Absolutely. As Ours your did. body changes, your formula will change. Right. Yeah. We and saw, it should change. We saw uh, this gentleman, uh, he was a um, Chinese medicine doctor for, I don't know, two months maybe. Mm -hmm. And uh, every day, you know, every appointment, he would check her pulse, get mm -hmm. an update, see how things were affecting, because they were definitely affecting her. Yeah. Uh, she was yeah. taking these, you know, yeah. herbal concoctions. Mm -hmm. um, she didn't mind it at all. Um, mm -hmm. And we could tell a difference. And, oh, well, she drank 10 times more than what she usually yeah. does. You know, mm -hmm. she was always thirsty. He's like, okay, okay. You know, mm -hmm. and, and that yeah. next formula would be different, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, and none of it affected her negatively. Mm -hmm. That was, I think, yeah. mm -hmm. the good thing for us. Yeah. Because every yeah. seizure med we've been on mm -hmm. has, effect, has had a negative, I mean, uh, a bad negative effect yeah. sometimes, yeah. you know, uh, where she's falling down or she's losing muscle oh, tone. And, um, there's some seizure meds out there that'll change your personality and wow. just make things awful, you know, yeah. and we did not experience that with, with Chinese okay. medicine. So talk to me a little bit about the pulse. Um, I thought mm -hmm. that was one of the most interesting things. Yeah. And, if, and if any of our viewers have ever been to a Chinese medicine doctor, mm -hmm. like one of the first things they do mm -hmm. for several minutes yeah. is check your pulse yeah. and they're, they're writing stuff on paper <laughs> and I'm like, what is going on? Um, and it, it was pretty interesting. Talk to me about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not magic. Um, so we check the pulse on both sides of the body and, um, you know, on the, the normal radial pulse. Right. And um, there are three different positions that we check and they correspond to the different organ systems. So um, what we're looking for at a very high level is, um, number one, how fast or slow the pulse is. That can tell us if there's heat in the body, if there's cold in the body. Hmm. Um, if the pulse is superficial to the skin, that can mean there's heat in the body or excess. If it's very deep and sort of muffled, um, that can tell us that there's dampness somewhere in the, that, 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 that huh. indicates those obstructions okay, this we were sense. talking about. Yeah, yeah so it's, it's very logical. Um, and then with, so we want to know, you know, heat, cold, dampness, um, and, and where it's located in the body so we can tell, you know. It, so if, if somebody has a cold, I can feel their pulse in the, the position that corresponds to the lung. And I mean, it'll be, it'll be fast, it'll feel like, and you can try this at home. Right. <laughs> um, the next time you have, you know, a cold, just feel your pulse and it'll be jumping out at you. It'll feel like it's jumping. Huh. Uh, and it'll feel very, very superficial. So that's one of the most, you know, yeah. the, the most obvious things to feel on right. your own, right. um, but, but it tells us what's happening inside the body. Yeah, um, speaking of cold, that was one thing um, mm -hmm. that I knew he knew what he was doing, uh, is I think, mm -hmm. it might have been, I think it was our first visit, he said, oh, she's had a cold recently. I'm like, mm -hmm. he's checking your pulse and telling mm -hmm. me, she, it's like, yeah. yeah, she literally just got mm -hmm. over this, mm -hmm. like yesterday. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. he absolutely knew that. Yeah. Um, she had no symptoms. Like she wasn't showing. She wasn't snot wasn't coming out her face. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I thought that was just absolutely remarkable. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he's writing down a bunch of stuff that he knows what it means. I have no idea what mm -hmm. it means. Um, and uh, so, kind of walk me through the rest of that appointment. You check pulse. Yeah, you check pulse. Um, we'll also look at the tongue. Okay. Um, the tongue can also tell us what's going on inside the body. If you think about it, the tongue is the extension. You know, it's a muscle. Right. It's an extension, so it's a reflection of what's going on. Um, if you take a look at your tongue, when you're not sick, things are normal. You know, it should be there, it should be, you know, a, a nice light red color, red right. color. Um, it should have a thin white coating. If you're sick, it'll be a little bit yellow. That's heat in the body. Um, sometimes when you're sick, you have a lot of phlegm. Right. The coat will get really thick. You know, it won't look normal. So the next time you have a cold, just <laughs> Right. Look at your tongue right your tongue. now, <laughs> and the next time you have a cold, take a look again, and you'll see a vast difference. Um, huh. So it's it's literally it's a reflection of what's going on in your body. He always looked at Grace's tongue, which is tough. Mm -hmm. uh, she was not mm -hmm. a fan. Um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, that's interesting. So, okay, so yeah. you check the pulse, you look at the mm -hmm. tongue. What mm -hmm. else kind of do you, you do you do in this appointment um, for so Chinese we, medicine? For Chinese medicine, yes. so um, we do an intake where we ask. Um, about different symptoms. Okay. There are different symptoms that correspond to that heat, cold, right. damp, dry, excess deficiency. And um, so we'll, we'll take a look at that, the symptoms that you're having, and we'll combine all three of those pieces of information, tongue, pulse, and symptoms, and then we'll start, that, that will correspond uh, 
to a diagnosis, a Chinese medicine okay. diagnosis, and then that diagnosis corresponds to the appropriate formula. Interesting. Um, now, uh, he always went in, because this is the only thing I have to compare, went into a back room and mm -hmm. I could hear bottles and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and mm -hmm. then he'd come out and he'd have, uh, it was like a big pill bottle full mm -hmm. of crushed mm -hmm. herbs, and they're all look just very colorful. Mm -hmm. And um, How many bottles of herbs do you have? Um, so I actually practice, I practice uh, Chinese medicine and I use capsules. Oh. That would be yes. a lot easier than the herbs we had to try to feed <laughs> yes. Grace. Yes. <laughs> we were mixing them with honey and all kinds of other yeah, stuff. Yeah. Applesauce. Yeah. So capsules, yeah. that's great. Yeah. So I, I find that for most of my patients, right. um, you know, the capsule form is just, they'll, they'll actually take it. Right. You know, if, if, um, if you have to go home and... Crunch up herbs. Yeah, crunch up herbs and <laughs> decoct them and boil them for however long. Yeah. So we take that work out of the equation for our patients. That's neat. And we, we prescribe the formulas in yeah. capsules. Now, do you do that kind of at a week at a time or two weeks, or what's the period that you're on that, those capsules, um, before so, they change? Yeah, so it depends. Um, so I check weekly. Okay. When I'm prescribing Chinese medicine, I'll check, you know, check the tongue and pulse weekly. Um, if the patient is improving, if the condition is improving, we'll stay the course. Okay. You know, that means that formula is working. Once the patient reaches uh, their maximum improvement on that formula and or the tongue and pulse indicates something has changed, then we'll switch up the formula. Interesting. So the formula might change every two weeks, every four weeks, right. depending on what we're treating. Okay. Very cool. Mm -hmm. so and then, oh, I'm sorry. Go, no, go yeah. ahead. So, and, and the ultimate goal is to get the body back into balance, to get things working, and to wean off of the formulas. Right. So there are very few formulas that are ever meant to be taken long term. Interesting. I love mm -hmm. the holistic, or mm -hmm. I guess consider it alternative medicine mm -hmm. now. Um, it's very interesting, and it makes so much logical sense to yeah. me um, yeah. that. I think everyone should take part in it. Yeah. Um, so, well, hey, I've absolutely enjoyed having you on our podcast. Well, thank you. I getting to know you a little it. bit. Thank you. Um, I'm going to come to you, and I know that probably our nurses, uh, a lot of our patients love acupuncture mm -hmm. and have mm -hmm. every year. So, we'll mm -hmm. we'll uh, send those folks your way. Now, where are you located? You. Um, so I'm located on Grand River, okay. just outside of Brighton. Okay. Um, uh, the towards Latson Road. Okay. So I'm across from Gordon Food Service. Oh, okay. If you yeah, know where that is. Not too far is. from here. It's like yeah, 10 not, minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not far at all. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And uh, they can just call you. We'll put your information, yes. schedule an appointment. Yes. Um, as far as scheduling, how booked mm -hmm. are you? Um, so I just uh, opened my clinic here in December okay. of 2023. So we definitely have openings. Great. And um, uh, my normal hours are 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., Monday through Friday. Okay. And the first step in our clinic is the initial consultation. So that's where you'll come in and we'll review your health history, your goals, right. and um, I'll come, I'll give you my best recommendation for treatment. And then we go from there. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, that's right. You came from Toledo, where I, I came from. Yes. You were there for a while. So yes, I was here, there so. for 10 years. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Well, hey everyone, thank you for joining us for this episode of Talk Talks. Uh, please like and share and comment if you have questions. Uh, we'll try to direct those uh, over to Carol. And uh, we'll put her information in the description. So if you are in need of acupuncture and think that might help you or Chinese medicine, as we talked about, feel free to reach out to her and we will see you guys next week.